name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big clap in the house. Take your seat. Look to somebody by your side and say, you're welcome to church. You're welcome to your father's house. Hallelujah. Amen. God told me he's raising people for himself in this ministry. And by 2024, it will become evident as Christ tarries. It will be evident in this ministry. Listen, you don't have to, you don't have to be a pastor for God to use you. Are you listening to me? You don't need title, all right, to possess mantles. Are you listening right now? You don't need title. You just need God to use you. And you must be available for God to use you. If you are not available, you can't be used by God. God uses available men. So irrespective of your gender, irrespective of your height, your color, God can use you. There is somebody here. God's hand will find you. And God will use you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to do a short teaching to the glory of God. This is the, the fourth day of our fasting and prayer. And um, the prayer will also continue tomorrow until next week. And I pray that God will give you every blessing that you deserve in this program in the name of Jesus. How many of you have been fasting? All right, bring your hand down. If you have not been fasting, please be sincere. Raise your hand. No worry. You know, say you're not been fast. Raise your hand. Don't do it like this. Do it like this. You don't know whether I want to dash you money. If you are not fasting, do your hand like this. Do a, 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 it. Like, say people when they fast, do they raise their hand because they have money. Amen. Hallelujah. Please, if you are not fasting, please start fasting tomorrow. It's fine. Hallelujah. It's a period of revival. It's just, just a period where we stay out of food. Or we take prayer points. It's a prayer. It's a period of revival. It's a period of what I call spiritual emphasis. And this fasting should be able to draw us closer to God. Is somebody here? At the end of this program... You should be able to have a closer walk, a closer um, relationship with God. Praise the name of Jesus. And there is something that is already happening. For some of us, we have begun to experience personal revival. Am I right? Yes, for some of us, we have begun to see ourselves in different dimensions. We have begun to see ourselves on fire. Just like we have never been. There are people who out of this fasting and prayer have been able to, you know, do some prayers that, you know, go into some realms that they have not uh, entered before when it comes to spirituality. Some places have not fasted this long before. You have not fasted up to four days before. Uh, there are people fasting from six to six. Some persons are fasting from six to three. You know, there are people that are trying it for the first time. Already there is revival in the atmosphere. There is fire in the atmosphere. Praise the name of Jesus. And it has been activated already. But I want to share with you how to sustain the spiritual revival. How to sustain spiritual revival. If you are following us online, you might have to write. Amen. So the objective of my teaching tonight is to help you understand what we mean by personal spiritual revival. That's number one. Number two, also help you understand the secret of personal spiritual revival. That is the keys to experiencing personal spiritual revival. Romans chapter 12 verse 11 and Leviticus chapter 6 verse 12 to 13. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. Romans chapter 12 verse 11 not slothful in business 
fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Please look at that scripture very well. There are three things, all right, that is being mentioned in that scripture. If you look at it very well, the first thing that is mentioned there is not slothful in business. You know, that is, there is an English a symbol or what is called, sign there. What is it called? This, what does it mean? Semicolon. The semicolon means what? Please, English language, I want to share something with you. What does it mean when, you see, when there is semicolon? Uh, it means what is in front is related, but they are not the same. Are you listening to me? All right. It talks about something that has to continue. Are you listening to me right now? So, not stuffful in business. That's different. You have to be fervent in spirit. All right. When you are serving the Lord. Hallelujah. Leviticus 6 verse 12. I'll come back to that. Leviticus 6 verse 12 to 13. Leviticus 6 12 to 13. Bible said, and the fire the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. It shall be burning. I pray for somebody here. May the fire of, upon your prayer altar continue to burn. I hate the way you said the amen here. May the fire on, upon your prayer altar continue to burn. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning. And lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offering. Go to verse 13. Glory to God. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. Shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. Now, everyone hear this. We live in a world that places a very high demand on our spiritual lives. Very high demand on our spiritual life. We live in a world that is abundant in unrighteousness. Is somebody here, you know, um, abundant in unrighteousness? If you see the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse uh, 24, Matthew 24, verse 12, uh, Bible said, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That's Matthew 24, verse 12. Because iniquity shall abound, unrighteousness shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. We are in a generation where, you know, people are tending to forget about their first love you know there are people who the way they started serving god three four years ago is not the same fire that they are using to serve god now some of us have you know we have begun to reduce in our fervency we have begun to reduce in our you know commitment to god uh, thank god for this program it is a way of bringing you back is somebody here whenever there is iniquity your love for god will reduce whenever there is unrighteousness the, your love for god will reduce second timothy chapter 3 verse 1 to 3 second timothy chapter 3 verse 1 to 3 this know also that in the last days perilous times shall Come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, blasphemous rather, disobedient to parents, unthankful. That one, that one, that one, that one, unthankful. It's full everywhere. It's part of the end time. It's like I'll take this scripture one small, small. This know also that in the last days. How many of you know we are in the last days? Mm. We are in the last of the last moments. Last of the last days. There are people who don't like to hear anything about last days. Because they are not prepared. We, 2020, in fact, 2024, we will begin to prepare you for rapture. <laughs> are you here? <laughs> Me, I'm ready. In case you don't know. If rapture happens now, Piam, I don't go. Are you listening to me? I'm prepared. I don't know about you. And for those that are not ready, 2024 will be, we'll start preparing you for the flight. We call it the first flight. Somebody say first flight. Please don't miss that flight. Oh. Anybody that missed the first flight, there's going to be a problem. 
very serious problem. Go and read the Bible. I will expose you in 2024 to it. Hallelujah. Bible said, perilous times shall come in the last days. For men shall become lovers of their own selves. Alright? People with, it's not, Bible really is not talking about homosexuality. Bible is talking about self-centeredness. People will put their self first before they put God. People will want their needs. That's what you see in church today. Most people go to church for what they will get from God. That is a sign of the end time. Am I talking to someone here? Most of our prayer points are centered. Centered on ourselves, ourselves, our needs, what I want. I want to get married. I want money. When I see prayer points online, sometimes I cry. Does this people really know what it means to be a child of God, to be Christians? All I want is a car. I want money. I want a breakthrough. I want to get married. You know, everything is just centered about now. About what they want now. That's why it's very easy for you to come to church. And then, you know, anybody that offends you, you just leave the church. Because you feel that, you know, it's just a church. It's just a church. People are not in church mostly because of God, but because of what they get, because of what is part of the end time. Is somebody here? Lovers of their own selves. Bible said they are covetous. Covetousness. Covetousness is part of the end time. People will covet what is not theirs. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. It's everywhere. Go to the internet. People call God names. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unthankful, ingratitude. People don't care. The spirit of um, um, entitlement. After all, you owe me. You owe me. Nobody owe you anything. Are you listening to me? The day it enters into your spirit, that day you will live. You start living well. Even when people do things for you, there are people that are not grateful unholy. Bible says without natural affection, that's natural affection. Amen? And then truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. These are signs of the end time. Now understanding personal spiritual revival. Personal revival is simply knowing what to do. Please take down this. Personal revival is simply knowing what to do to keep the altar of fire burning. That's number one. Knowing what to do to keep your prayer life aflame. Number two, personal revival is simply knowing what to do to maintain spiritual intensity, spiritual fervency, spiritual vibrancy, spiritual buoyancy. Knowing what to do. To have spiritual intensity. Knowing what to do. Number three, to avoid spiritual dryness and staleness. There are people that don't feel God when they come to church. When the worship is going on, they don't feel God. They feel strange. They feel dry. So others are connecting. Others are, you know, you know, loving on God. But you just stand there and you're like, what's really going on? Dryness. Dryness. Staleness. Knowing what to do to maintain spiritual freshness. And newness. That is personal revival. To maintain spiritual momentum. Knowing what to do to maintain spiritual momentum. To maintain spiritual drive and enthusiasm. To remain spiritually aware. Spiritually aware. Spiritually awake. And spiritually alive. As in our revival. Nothing should take you unaware, sir. Nothing takes me unaware. If anything wants to happen, I should be aware. On Sunday, we were, I came into the church and I was praying. I told you of a revelation I saw in the morning of um, a, a, a seemingly kind of attack. God will always open your eyes if you are spiritually alert. Is somebody listen to me? And then after the prayer, a young man, while I was leaving, met me. I think, was he your brother? It was your brother that met me and said he had a similar revelation previous night. And then one, two, three, four, confirming it, 
drew me into prayers. When you are spiritually alert, nothing takes you by surprise. Nothing takes you by surprise. When you are spiritually fervent, nothing takes you by surprise. Spiritual personal revival is simply knowing what to do to remain spiritually awake, to remain spiritually relevant and impactful. That's what personal spiritual revival is. And then what are the secrets or the keys to experiencing personal spiritual revival? Number one, you must maintain what I call spiritual brokenness. Somebody say spiritual brokenness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You must be broken. Spiritually broken. Praise the Lord. You must be spiritually broken. And then number two, you must maintain a constant attitude of gratitude. Somebody say attitude of gratitude. Once again, say it louder. Attitude of gratitude. It means that you must be grateful at all times. Psalms 89 verse 15. Psalm 89 verse 15. And Psalms 22 verse 3. Psalms 89 verse 15. Psalms 89 verse 15. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk. O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Go to Psalms 22 verse 3. Psalms 22 verse 3. Bible says, but thou art holy, O thou, that inhabitest the praises of his people. Is somebody here? Yes, a, a heart, a, a, a maintain an attitude of gratitude. Another key is a heart that is free of bitterness and a heart that is full of forgiveness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This will help you to become spiritually alert. A heart that is full of forgiveness and a heart that is free of bitterness. A heart that is full of forgiveness and a heart that is free from bitterness. And the next one is a life of humility. A life of humility will help you uh, maintain and sustain a spiritual, personal spiritual revival. A life of humility. James chapter 4 verse 10. James chapter 4 verse 10. James chapter 4 verse 10. Very popular scripture. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and ye, he shall lift you up. He shall lift you up. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Number, okay the next one. You must maintain a permanent hunger for the things of God. Maintain a permanent hunger for the things of God. Hunger for God and hunger for reality. Matthew chapter 5 verse 6. You must have that hunger. You must have that hunger for God. To maintain a fervent spiritual revival, you must maintain. Blessed are they which do hunger and test after righteousness for they shall be filled you must be hungry for god you must be hungry for the things of god you must be hungry to know god you must be thirsty for him as the heart panted after the water brooks so long get my soul after thee so long get you must hungry if you don't desire you can't acquire we run out of revival when we run out of hunger. We run out of fire when we run out of desire. We run out of revival when we run out of hunger. Hunger for the things of God. Hunger to come to his house. Hunger for evangelism. Hunger for prayer. Hunger for fasting. Hunger to do the will of God. Hunger to do the righteousness. To do righteousness. Never get to a point where you are over familiar with God though. Never get to that point. There are many of us that God is our mate now. That even when God is speaking to you, you ignore him. When God is giving you instruction, you ignore him. Never get to that point where you know God to the extent that you are familiar. Remain a stranger with him, not to him. Remain a stranger with God. Whenever you come to God, pretend you are nobody. 
Stay as a nobody. Come empty so that he can fill you. Whenever I come before the presence of God to worship, I forget everything I am. I, have, I forget everything I have so that he can fill me. Never get to that point where you are satisfied with what you have achieved with God. Never get to that point. Today I was meditating. Ah! The Spirit of God, you know, began to put my mind back on certain things that has happened in my life. And I was like, God. But the next thing I heard was, don't be okay. Don't be satisfied. There is more in God. There's a deeper realm in God. There's a deeper work in God. Hallelujah. There is a realm we have not entered yet. Oh. As a ministry, as a person. Is somebody here? There is a realm. There is a realm we have not entered. And you must hunger. You must maintain a permanent hunger to get there. To agree to be satisfied is to be set aside by God. Whenever you are claiming to be okay, you are where you are satisfied, you are okay with where you are. It means that sometimes church is not important anymore. You know, prayer is not important anymore. You are just okay with where you are. If you read the book of 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 3 to 4, you'll see a story there. To agree to be satisfied is to be set aside by God. Is to be set aside by God. Then he said, go, borrow the vessels abroad of all the neighbors. Empty, where? 2 Kings 4, right? Yes. Empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And then verse 4, quickly. Verse 4. And when thou art coming, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons. And shall pour out into all those vessels. And thou shalt set aside that which is full. Thou shalt set aside. Where you are full, you'll be set aside. When you think you are full, you'll be set aside. When you think you are okay, you'll be set aside. When you think you know too much, you'll be set aside. When you think you are now, you have arrived, you know, you, you'll be set aside. When you think that you are okay, you are now a bishop, you are now an oga, oga, pata, pata, you'll be set aside. Did you see that? And thou shalt set aside that which is full. That which is full. And thou shalt set aside. Until you see Jesus face to face, there is still a face for you. Until we see Jesus face to face, there is still another realm. There is still another level. There is still something he wants to do with your life. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. It has not entered into the heart of any man what God has prepared for them that love him. Sir, God is calling, out, or calling us out to a deeper realm. God is calling us out to a deeper walk with him. There is a realm. There is a realm. I told God, I said, God, I've not even started anything. I need more, more of you. I want to go to the nations of the earth. I want you to use me like you have never done. I'm available. That's my prayer. I'm not praying for money. Hallelujah. Just like Pastor Chris. Pastor Chris said, now nah, he's not praying for, there's nothing he needs in his life now. <laughs> Is it land? Is it money? Whatever. He doesn't need it. That's not, that's not his prayer. His prayer point is anything that will make him know better, know God better. That's, that's my prayer too. That's my prayer. And when all those things are in place, other things will follow. Sometimes we misplace priority. We follow material things. Leaving our spirituality behind. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. All these other things are supposed to come. No, you don't follow these things. That's a misplaced order. Money is supposed to follow you. Houses are supposed to follow you. But what do you follow? Seek after the kingdom. Then these things will follow you. Is somebody here? But you see, when you are putting money in front, there's no way the riches of the kingdom can come. God has to be in front. You have to keep pushing. You have to keep, you have to keep chasing after him. You have to keep moving. You have to keep pursuing God. Other things will come. Other things will come. Praise the Lord. There is a new level. There is a new realm that God is calling us onto. The next thing I'm sharing in order to maintain or sustain your spiritual revival is prayer without ceasing. Somebody say prayer without ceasing. 
Louder, louder. It says prayer without ceasing. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 13. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 13. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians 5, verse. Yes, 5, verse 13. And Ephesians 6, verse 18. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among thyself. Please look at Ephesians 6.18. Ephesians 6.18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. All saints. If you want to continue to sustain your spiritual revival, you must pray without ceasing. Always. That's what the Bible said. John 7 verse 37. John 7 37. John 7 37. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man tests, let him come unto me and drink. Let him come unto me and drink. Jesus is still crying. Jesus is still shouting, come unto me and drink. Come unto me and drink. There is more in God. There is more in God. Pray without ceasing means pray like your life depends on it. Let it look like your, your life is, is your breath. Your breath, your life depends on prayer. When prayer fire, when your prayer fire goes down, spiritual life will go, go down. When your prayer fire goes down, your spiritual life will go down. And your revival fire will also go down. When your prayer life goes down, your spiritual life is literally irrigated. Are you here? Your spiritual life is irrigated by your prayer life. It's watered by your prayer life. Your spiritual life is watered, irrigated by your prayer life. Especially when you pray in the spirit. When you pray in the spirit. John, uh, where we read in John 7... Then if you look at 37, look at 38 and 39 quickly. 38 and 39. He that believeth on me as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And for the sake of the spirit, but this spake, of he, spake he of the spirit, which they that believe on him should re receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Glory be to God. Every time prayer begins to decay, spiritual life begins to dry. When your prayer life begins to decay, you no longer find joy in praying. You have to struggle, struggle to connect. There are people that you just struggle, struggle to connect is a problem. To start praying, you just stay, stay, stay. You sit there today, I'm going to pray. And then, then you just sleep. When your prayer life starts going down, your revival starts going down. Your prayer, your fire will start going down. Is somebody here tonight? Hallelujah. You must not joke with your prayer life. I force myself to pray. Listen, you don't, you don't need to be in the mood to pray, to pray. You don't need to be in the mood of prayer. I force myself to pray. Every day, I must pray. I, I force my, there are times I don't feel like my mind is troubling me from one place to the other. One challenge is here, this one is calling me, this one is calling me. I will tell myself, I tell myself, you must, Greg, you must pray. <laughs> Amen. I'll fix my earpiece, that's nothing. And I will be playing songs that will put me in the realm. Are you here? Yes, don't wait. For as long as you are praying, something is happening in the atmosphere of your life. That's the truth. There's nothing like I don't feel like praying. You must feel it. If you don't feel it, make yourself feel it. Enter into that realm. Are you here? Are you here with me? Because what will keep you alive spiritually is your prayer. When you start reducing, when you start drawing back your prayer altar, a lot of things will start creeping in. Prayer is fire. It burns off some things. A life that is a, 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 a Christian or a believer that is always praying cannot entertain the devil. The things of the world can't survive around him because he's always on fire. Don't wait to be in the mood of prayer to pray. Pray when you feel it. Pray when you don't feel it. Is somebody here? That's why it's important for you to be filled with the Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost in you helps you to do extra things. Are you here? 
Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost in you helps you. He shall help you when he shall come. The spirit of truth shall come. He shall show you all things. That's why other thing. He shall help you. Let me tell you this. I will continue. What the Holy Ghost does in your life. When it comes to prayer. Because it's the Holy Spirit that helps you to pray. Are you here? That's one thing. It's just like somebody who is driving. I think I've made an illustration here before. It's like somebody who is in who is driving a bicycle all right the person is driving a bicycle he uses energy to drive the bicycle are you listening right now yes he's struggling 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 to move struggling to move is like someone who is born again but is not baptized in the spirit are you here he's not baptized in the holy ghost and then another person or another illustration is somebody that is driving a bike, not a bicycle, a motorbike. Somebody on a motorbike is not the same as somebody that is in a bicycle. Somebody in a bicycle is using his energy to move. Somebody in the motorbike is using what energy? Is it kinetic? Eh? Science student, kinetic energy. That's the spiritual force. Is kinetic energy is likened to a spiritual force. All you need to do is sit on the motorbike and exert a little pressure and it will keep moving. Just accelerate it, it, will, it will keep moving. But you can't, you cannot compare somebody that is in a motorbike with somebody that is in a car. They are all different level. When the Holy Ghost comes on you, he does some work in you. Especially your prayer life. He helps you to pray. There are times you don't know what to pray. Bible said we don't know what to pray. But the Holy Ghost helped us. He prayed through us. Hello, are you here? Are you here? So praying in tongues is part of what your spirit does. The Holy Ghost comes in part on your spirit and pray through your spirit. That's praying in tongues. He prays through your spirit. Your spirit is one praying. The Holy Ghost is helping your spirit pray. That's tongues. That's praying in the spirit. He comes and helps your spirit to pray. Worship. And then the Holy Ghost takes over you. You are there for 30 minutes. You are there for one hour. And you don't know how much you are just there worshiping God and you are praying. And four hours is gone. On a normal day, you can't stay four hours praying. You will be bored. Am I right? Yeah, you'll be tired. You'll be tired. Us to do. We, God wants us to pray without stopping. Pray in between. Pray in us. Fixing, fixing prayer in everything you do. Are you listening right now? Fix prayer into everything you do. While you are at the ATM stand, preparing to get a withdrawal, instead of scrolling through your phone and Instagram, chipping prayer into that moment. Is somebody here? While you are eating, chipping prayer, you, don't, you must not move your mouth. While you are eating, in your spirit, pray. Maintain. The, the other one, another one is here. Maintain the consecration. A consecrational fast. That's the word. Waiting on the Lord is a spiritual strength uh, and spiritual fire renewal exercise. Just as what we are doing. Hallelujah. And then the other one is maintain a daily intake of the word. You must be fed by the word. Matthew 4 verse 4. You must be fed by the word. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. You must be fed by the word. Luke chapter 4 verse 4. Now hear this. Why we put out that scripture as we live by food physically, we also live by the word spiritually. As we live by food physically, we also live by the word spiritually. When we don't eat in the physical, what happens? We lose weight. We become malnourished. Am I right? When you don't take in the word of God regularly, you will lose weight spiritually and you will become spiritually malnourished. That is why it's important. Every day of your life, feed on the word. Feed on the word. Pick a scripture. Meditate upon that scripture. Allow the scripture have a residue, a resident in your spirit. And then maintain righteousness. Don't live in sin. Hosea chapter 10 verse 12. Hosea chapter 10 verse 12. Please, those on the projection, you got to help me. Maintain righteousness. It will help you sustain your spiritual revival. 
Hosea 10 verse 12. So to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord. Till he come and rain righteousness upon you. And rain righteousness upon you. Hallelujah. Don't live in sin. Don't sleep with unconfessed sin. It will always harden your conscience. When you maintain the tenderness of conscience, you cannot be comfortable with the wrong thing around you. Praise the Lord. And I think this is the last one I'm going to share. Connect with positive influence and inspiration. Connect. Your, you will sustain spiritual revival when you connect with positive influence and inspiration. Because I cannot answer a billion times. Do you know what it means to answer a billion times? I cannot answer a billion times. There are times I'll be very weak. I don't know if you answer. I can't pray. I can't. I'm, I'm being sincere with you. Are you listening to me? I'm not a religious by God. Because everybody's singing it, I have to sing it. It's a nice song if you can answer a billion times. You never have to talk a thousand times, F. A billion times. Come to church early. Six, come to church by eight o'clock. God is calling you. God is always in the church before service starts. So God is waiting for you by 6.30 in the church. And by 9 o'clock you are dragging your feet. And you are singing a billion times. No way. That's not right. Am I talking to someone here? Ah, Are you here? I, I hope I'm not offending anybody. Are you a soldier for God? Can we sing that song? <laughs> Can we sing it now? Eh? No, let's sing it. Bro, can we sing it? Play it. Everybody, rise up. Do your hand like this. Shed like this and they, they, they sing them. Is it like this? Stand up now, don't worry. I'm still teaching you so that after now, where you live here, you will know what it means to jump into trend. Because everybody's doing it, we have to do it. You are doing TikTok with it. You, am I you are doing Instagram video with it. One, two. I am a soldier on the battle. It's okay. Let's take it again. One, two. Louder. Raise it up. Thank you. Once more, once more, one more. All right, skip standing. Between you and God now, ask yourself this song I just sang, am I sincere? See, see, I am not trying to make you feel bad. I'm, I'm trying to bring you to reality. Are you sure that when he calls you, you will answer? Are you sure you will not give excuse when God needs your attention? I don't sing that song. I will never do a video with it. Every day I'm saying, God, help me to respond to your call. Every day. Not because there is a trend, but because I want to be real with you. I am a mortal man. I have my flaws. But every day I'm, I'm walking towards the light of perfection. Am I talking to someone here? Let's not be religious. Let's be real. Let's not be religious. Let's be real. Let's be real Christians, not religious Christians. Christians who come to church, you know, because there is a church, because there is Sunday church. Let's love God, not because of the bread and butter, not because of the five loaves of bread and three fishes. Why are you coming to church, man? Why? Why? The question is this. If there is no bread, 
will you serve God? If there is no water, will you serve God? The people that are the test of your faith is not during your moment, the moment of abundance. Is during the moment of scarcity. Go to Palestine. Go to Palestine. Every day, about 10,000 persons die in Gaza. Every day. Every day. Now, hear this so it will shock you. Most, there are people in that place, not just Muslims, there are Christians there. If you want to prove your Christianity, go to Palestine. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. A day will come. We, we, we all will, will stand before a situation that will test your faith in God. That's why you need to be always alert. You need to be fervent in your prayer altar. Don't sleep through the night and snore through the night. Is somebody here? No matter how tired and how weak I am, I stay up night studying my Bible reading through scriptures, trying to understand things I don't know, praying in the Holy Ghost, and telling God, I want to know you more. Every night, every night, oh, there was a Sunday night. I forgot that, you know, there was no prayer. And I was preparing myself until I remember that that Sunday night was not prayer. Sir, you need to fan to flame that desire for God. Fan it to flame. We are doing fasting and prayer. This is a moment. This is a season where you log in. Plug yourself and catch the fire. You see, the next, the past few days, we have been praying intensely. When we come here, we worship, we worship, we worship, we pray. Some person might just take it for granted. No! Something is cooking. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. People are being built up in the realm of the spirit. Tomorrow is going to be Holy Ghost night. If you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, I will lay hands on you, you'll be baptized. That's part of this of spiritual fervency. When you pray in the spirit, you, when they say, raise your voice and let's pray in tongues. We we're praying in tongues on Tuesday. Here, a young man was watching online. No, he was listening online. So this is what somebody told me. Listen, oh, we're praying in tongues. Everybody praying in tongues. And then a word of knowledge came. There is somebody listening online. The Holy Ghost is touching you. The young man, the power of God moved him from his seat and threw him out of the house. This guy is one of these street boys. But his heart was connected to tell you that it doesn't matter who you are, where you are. The guy has been texting me. He's on Instagram. The guy has been sending me messages and voice notes on Instagram that he wants to serve God. He wants to stop all the nonsense, all the evil life he has been doing. How did God touch him? His friend told me that he was, the guy was speaking in tongues. He spoke in tongues for four hours. Hey, boy. Four hours. The guy was, so his brother said they should leave him. They should just leave him outside. Now, you, you are here. Somebody is there. So what happened to you, sir? Someone said the heart. You, you are here. Somebody is there. Lift your right hand and worship him. Worship him. Everyone just go ahead and worship him. And I, I can hear you. Just say something to him. Say, Jesus, I want to love you more. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to love you. Oh, yes, Lord. Help me to know you. Help me to love you. Keep me awake for you. Keep me afresh with your presence. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Oh, I will make my heart your dwell in place. I will build your throne in my heart. Come Holy Spirit, 
Come on now. Come on now. Come, oh, oh come. And take your place. Say after me, say, Spirit of God, possess me. Take charge of my body. Take charge of my life. Help me to know you. Just lift your two hands and begin to pray now. If you are filled with the Holy Ghost with your two hands lifted up, pray in the Spirit. 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 Metumaka Gio Jehovah Metumaka Gio Esembo Metumaka Gio Onye Nebe Ma Metunu makagi Eze E kwe kwa laga Amdi o twa wila Metumo Metunu makagi Eze Eze E kwe kwa I'm the Otwa Willa. Metunumo, Metumaka. Yes, a boy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. May God give you a test and a hunger that will carry you through all this season. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Ayala Bashan. Mm. This meeting is for somebody. I don't know who you are. Hmm? This meeting is for you. I heard the Lord saying, I'm pouring out grace on somebody. I don't know who you are. Grace, special grace. Special grace. It's pouring out. It's pouring out. Yes, yes. Please receive. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, special grace. Special. There is somebody here. The special grace of God is pouring out on you. Woo! Hey, Ania Sabadash. Special grace. Special grace. Mm. 
Mande Gusotolia Zerande Baladas Erecora Yeshu And tools are dropping, say at the Lord, pick the mantle. Mantles are dropping. Mantles are dropping. Mantles are dropping. Mantles are dropping. Yes, 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 yes. Mantles are dropping. Mantles are dropping. Hey! Mantles are dropping here. Mantles are dropping here. Man, tools are dropping. Hey. Ilana Masondes. E Galane Amadasha. E Arabababasha. Makole no se farade. E Gasosodas. E Andolobos. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Rabades. Pushing, 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 go a little bit deeper. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Push in. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. Oh.
In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Please, wherever you are, just close your eyes and stretch your hands. I'm rounding up. I'm rounding up. Just stretch your hands. Stretch your hands. There's somebody that God wants to pick out. And God is preparing you for something. Very strong. God is preparing you to, for something very strong. Mm. God is preparing you for something strong. I pray for you that this fasting will bet a new realm and order of revival in your life. In the name of Jesus. And amen. Hallelujah. See, 